Hi guys, even though I'm not here with you in class today, you are still responsible for the day five homework that is night. If I were you, I would pause the video, start working on the day five do now, and when you're done, return to it, that way we can go over it. So for the first one, they're, when they're asking if x minus five is a factor of the function, if you divide by it and get a zero remainder, it's a factor. If you divide and get a remainder other than something else, then it is not a factor. So what you have to do is, instead of dividing, because that will take very long, we're going to use the remainder theorem from your homework last night. That means instead of dividing by x minus 5, we're going to plug in what we get when we solve this equation. And it's important that you take the time to solve the equation because sometimes it's not going to be as easy as taking the opposite. Sometimes you actually have to solve. So what we're going to do now is we have what value of x we want, and we're going to put this equation into our calculator. You can substitute it by hand by doing 5x cubed plus 5x squared minus 27 times 5 minus 15. But I find that it's easier if you put the equation in y equals and then look at the table. So our equation is x cubed plus x squared minus 27x minus 15. And we're specifically looking at when the x value is 5. So I'm going to go to table, which is second, the blue button, graph, top right. See it says table in blue, so you hit the blue button. We scroll down to where x is 5 and we see that we have a 0. So that means if you were to divide, 0 is your remainder. I'm going to show my work. By writing the table, I look at the coordinate 5 comma 0. Now, it does say to explain your answer. So showing your work is not enough. You also, also, not instead, also, you have to show the work as well. You have to write a full sentence. So we can say our answer is yes, because there is no remainder. And that's sufficient. We know there's no remainder because of all this work that we did on the side. If you did get a number other than zero, then your answer would be no because there is a remainder. Now for the second one, we're going to do, it's pretty much the same thing but with a graph instead of an equation. So what we're going to do is we are dividing by x minus 1. And we're going to start it off the same way as we did with before, we are going to solve for x and we get x is positive 1. Now from the last equation, we would put something in y equals, we would go to the table, and we would see what is at 1, like what is your y value. Unfortunately for this example, we don't have an equation to do that with. Instead we have a graph. So we're going to go to where x is equal to 1 on the graph. And at x is equal to 1, we see this coordinate. And that coordinate is 1, comma, negative 2. Which means your table is 1, comma, negative 2. In which case, the negative 2 is your remainder. So you did have a homework video to watch. All of this came from the homework video. Please keep in mind that the remainder theorem is not a substitution for dividing. If a problem asks you to divide, you can't just use the remainder theorem because it only gets you the remainder. In order to find out the entire quotient when dividing, you have to actually divide, which you can do long division, the box method, 
or uh, synthetic if you're able to use synthetic for that problem. However, when you have multiple choice questions, we are not going to divide. Please do not divide for a multiple choice question. I'm telling you now, you will not have enough time to finish the test if you're trying to divide for multiple choice questions. Instead, use the remainder theorem because when you get your remainder, you can just match it up with the answer choice. If you guys do have specific questions about this homework, you can ask me in class tomorrow. But again, the practice is all the remainder theorem. You're dividing by x minus 2. So in your table, you should be looking at, when you put this in y equals, you should be looking at 2, and then your y value will be 50. If you're dividing by x plus 1, you are plugging in a negative 1. They're saying the remainder is 0, so your table should look like negative 1 comma 0. That would be choice 3. This one is a little bit difficult. So part A we should have been okay with. It's telling you to verify that P of 9 is equal to 0. That means you are plugging in 9. If you did this with a table by putting this in y equals, your table would be 9, that should be a y, 0, because 0 is your remainder. That's verifying it. Now, if 9 is your x value, we are going to go do the opposite and say that x minus 9 must be the factor. Now, if something is a factor, you can divide by it. So you're going to take the original equation, x cubed minus 8x squared minus 29x plus 180, and you're going to divide by that factor, which I did here. And I got an answer when I divided of this. So that means x minus 9, my factor, times my quotient is now rewritten instead of the original problem. And then you could continue to factor your quotient to get all of the other factors. Now, did I expect you to get this on your own right away? No, not really. However, we are going to be practicing this and in the next unit, I believe, we have a lesson solely on doing this. However, our target for today is at the end of the 42 minutes. I can use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. It's essentially the same exact thing. It's saying that if you plug in x equals 9 and get out a 0, so that 0 is your remainder, then the factor, because this is a 0, right, because plugging in 9 literally gave you 0, the factor is the opposite, x minus 9. Every time you go in and out of parentheses, you always have to take the opposite value. That's just a rule in math. So going over the first one, it's kind of like your homework, but worded a different way. It's asking you which of the following binomials is a factor. So they're not asking if one binomial is a factor, they're asking you multiple ones at once. And instead of trying to divide by four factors, or rather four binomials to see if they're a factor, it's a lot easier to use the remainder theorem. Now, remember, if you are plugging in, sorry, if you're dividing by x plus 6, then you are plugging in the opposite, x equals negative 6. If you are dividing by x minus 4, you are plugging in the opposite, which is x equals 4. If you are uh, dividing by x minus 8, you are doing the opposite, which is 8. And if you are dividing by x plus 2, you are looking at x is equal to negative 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our equation, put it in the calculator, 
and we're going to go to the table. It's a very long bell. You're going to look at each of these x values that we've chosen. Negative 6, negative 2, 4, and 8. And you're going to see which y value gives you a 0 because we want a remainder of 0 in order for it to be a factor. So why don't you try this on your calculator, pause the video, and see what you get. Should not have graphed it. There we go. So negative 6 gave me 378, and negative 2 gave me 110. Four gave me negative fifty two and eight gave me zero. So the one that's the factor is the one that has a zero remainder. And if eight is the zero, then x minus eight is the factor, the opposites. Zeros and factors are opposite values. Now, why don't you copy down your steps, pause the video, and then we'll move on. So going over the next one, and this is probably the hardest type of problem that you can get. It was a region's question. They want you to fill in the value of k to the polynomial. That way, you when you divide, you get a remainder. Now, please pay attention to this one because chances are we will have a midterm this year. And if we have a midterm, I do not get to make it. But in the previous midterms, this type of problem has always shown up. So it's important to know how to do this. Now, first of all, we have an equation. And that equation is x cubed minus kx squared plus 2. Now, they're saying that we are dividing by x minus 1. So with the remainder theorem, because you can't divide this, I mean, you don't know what k is, the division won't work out. But with the remainder theorem, if you're dividing by x minus 1, that means you can be plugging in positive 1. And guys, you should be using the remainder theorem because it says remainder in it. So when you plug in a positive 1, Remember, we don't know what k is, so that's just going to stay as k. When you plug in positive 1, you get out the remainder. And in this case, they're telling you what the remainder is. They're saying that the remainder is 8. So this should be set equal to 8, your remainder. And now you have an equation that you guys can totally solve for x. Because 1 cubed is 1 minus k times 1 squared is just k, or k times 1 if you prefer, plus 2 equals 8. 2 plus uh, 1 is 3 minus k equals 8. Subtract 3. Negative k is equal to 5, which means that positive k oops, 
is equal to negative 5. Probably the hardest type of remainder problem that there is. My suggestion is that you guys take the next, I don't know, 10 minutes and you practice through the next practice on your own. However, if you need the video, it's here for you to refer to. If they're asking you for is 1 a 0 of polynomial uh, p, what you should be doing is putting the equation in y equals on your calculator. And you should actually be doing that, not just watching the video. That way, when it comes time for a test or a quiz, you're prepared and you remember how to do it. They're asking if 1 is a 0. That means we have x equals 1. So all you have to do is, in your table, under 1, what y value do you get? And the y value that I got was 84 when I plugged 1 in. So is it a zero? Nope, because you didn't get zero. Now they're asking if x plus 3 is a factor. So we set it equal to zero, and we're trying to see if x equals negative 3 is the zero. x plus 3 is the potential factor. x equals negative 3 is the potential zero. So when you go to your table, same table, and you look at negative 3, you get 0. Now, guys, if you're someone who plugged in negative 3 on your own and you did negative 3 to the fourth plus 3 times negative 3 cubed minus 28 times negative 3 squared, minus 36 times negative 3, equal, uh, plus 144. If you didn't get 0, it's because you either typed a number in wrong, or you didn't use parentheses. Without parentheses, you will be considered wrong. Anyway, because you do get 0, your answer is yes. So keep in mind that if x plus a is a factor of p, the remainder is 0. If x plus a is the factor, then x equals negative a, the opposite is 0. And the reason for that is if you set x plus a equal to 0 and you subtract, you get x equals negative a. Let's skip past that. Okay. They're asking you to use an appropriate procedure to show that x minus 4 is a factor. Don't divide. This is a two-point question and is meant to go quickly. If you want to see if something is a factor, use the remainder theorem. If you divide by x minus 4, you should be plugging in a positive 4. You're going to take this equation and in your calculator y equals 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 11x minus 4. You're going to go to your table and you are going to look at 4. You're going to see the value of, let's see, 0, which is your remainder. Now they are saying to explain, which means you need a full sentence for your second point. This is a yes or no question. You have to write either yes or no. Actually, no, it's not a yes or no question. They're telling you to show that it is a factor. You should be getting zero. So x minus 4 is a factor because there is no remainder. Please make sure that when you're showing your work, you show what you plugged into Y, 
and what you're looking at in your table specifically. For number three, if you're dividing by x plus four, that means you are looking at x equals negative four. There's no table to look at because there is no um, graph. But at negative four, so that is over here, that coordinate that you have right there is negative four comma zero. This is the x value, this is the y. If you were to write that on the table, it would be negative four comma zero. So there is no remainder. For number four, if you're dividing by x plus four, That means you are plugging in a negative 4. Now that they're saying the remainder is 0. So they're saying when you plug in negative 4, you get out a 0. That would be choice 2. This is your input. It's what you're plugging in, your x value. The 0 is your y value. If you want to determine which binomial is a factor, first you need to see what you have to plug into your graphs, or rather into your calculator. We are looking at the opposites because these are factors, potential factors, these are potential zeros. So we have x equals negative 5, x equals negative 20, x equals 24, and x equals 5. Take your calculator, put this in y equals, you go to your table, and you look at the values negative 20, negative 5, 5, and 24. And in order to see which one is a factor, you see which one gives you a 0. So 5 gives you 0, but be careful because this is x equals 5, which means the factor is x minus 5. Be careful with number 6 because you can't, you have to do a few steps before you use the remainder theorem. You can't plug in a negative 3 because you're doing the opposite of positive 3. You have 2x plus 3 equals 0. That means when you solve for x, you get negative 3 halves or negative 1.5. And the issue with this one is that this is not something you could see on your calculator in your table because your table goes by increments of 1. You know, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't do decimals. So you have to do this problem by substituting it in on your own. Everywhere you see an x, you're going to put negative 1.5. And make sure you're using parentheses on your calculator, or else it's not going to be good. You'll get a different answer. If you're just watching along this video and if you're not pausing it to try these problems on your own, you will not do as well as if you were trying on your own. Anyway, when you plug that into the calculator, you get out a 5, which means 5 is your remainder. The issue is that two answer choices have a 5, so we know it can't be 3 and it can't be 4, but we don't know if it's choice 1 or 2. 
And if you don't know, that means we're going to have to divide just a little bit. Not the whole thing, but start to divide. So if you divide the first two terms, and this is, you can't do that for the entire problem, but when you're dividing, you generally divide the first numerator by the first denominator. That's always the first step, no matter what method you use. When you do this, 6x cubed divided by 2x, well, x cubed divided by x is x squared, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, looks like it's going to be choice 1. Okay, let's move on to 7. The remainder, uh, sorry, what you're dividing by is x minus 2. That means we're looking at positive 2. At positive 2 on this graph, we get the coordinate. This is a lousy coordinate. We're going to assume that this is on the point. But we're going to say we get the coordinate 2, comma, negative 5, which gives us a table of 2, negative 5. And we know that negative 5 is your remainder. If 8 is the 0, this is x equals 8, then the factor is x minus 8. Make sure it's in parentheses. If x minus 4 is the factor, then the opposite, x equals 4, is the 0. Last one we're going to do is number 10. So for number 10, we want to find k again so that x plus 1 is a factor. Now, they're talking about factors. That means we're looking for a remainder of 0 when we plug in what? We're trying to divide by x plus 1, so we're looking at x is equal to negative 1. So when we plug negative 1 into the equation, we should get 0. I'm going to substitute a negative 1 here for every single x value. Make sure you use parentheses. I don't know what k is, so I'm going to leave it as k. Negative 1 squared plus negative 1 plus 6. And when you plug in the negative 1, it should equal 0 to be a factor. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Times k is just plus k or plus 1k. Minus 1 plus 6 equals 0. Solve for k. Negative 1 minus 1 plus 6 is plus 4 equals 0. That means that k has to be equal to negative 4. Okay. Make sure that you do the homework for tonight, the day five homework, because it will lead you into polynomials for tomorrow. And if you don't watch the polynomial homework, you are going to miss out on a lot of definitions. And that means the entire next four days are going to be bad for you. It's very important to do the homework. Anyway, hope you have a good day. See you tomorrow.